all these canoes out here this morning. And me, well, I'm down here in my usual place. And I've got this starter motor to go into my boat. It's from Robbie, goose rooter from Geraldine. And my makeshift uh, patch is not working very good. She's taken on water already. Uh, we'll see how we go. We'll put her out there and head out to uh, the old bucket hairy assholes. Jeez, they're making some noise, those guys, having fun. I'm heading out to that. And uh, you can probably see it's got a for sale sign on it because I'm selling it once I get it uh, running again. You can see that I've uh, made a piss poor job of trying to fit this one here on. I drilled this uh, hole down the bottom here, that one there, right through the, the cast iron block. And uh, it just never meshed up straight. She's a gap there. If you do it too tight, it doesn't go. If it's too loose, it falls off. You go to the right and it starts it, but it's just not adequate. So... I'm taking my straps off and we're going to replace it with the one that Robbie sent me. Right, hey. Doing a good packing. Good on you, Robbie. Jeez. It's off an old Leyland, so we don't know if she's going to fit or not. Robbie would have tested it. It looks a lot bigger than the one I had. Or well, maybe it's just the colour. Oh, and it's certainly heavier than the one I had. Oh, we're going to find out if she fits. Hmm. Geez, you're a good bastard, Robbie. Going to the trouble of packing all this for me. Lots of good packing here. Just make sure there's nothing uh, else in the box. You never know with stuff, do you? Oh, nice. The goose router. Geraldine. It's okay to not be okay. Bloody right, mate. Good bastard, okay. What a legend. Thanks, goose router. Geez, you've got to be uh, pretty confident to live up to that sort of a name anyway. Appreciate your help, man. And if it doesn't fit and it doesn't work, I just want to say all the same. Thanks for uh, trying, because I know getting a Nuffield three-cylinder uh, engine starter motor is about as scarce as hen's teeth. I mean, this thing probably came out during the arc. In fact, this motor probably came out of the arc. This is the one that Noah probably had in his boat. Oh, yeah. Man, please fit, please fit. Jeez, I don't know. It's, uh, looks different already, but we'll find out very soon. She's not going to go around. Oh, come on, mate. Doesn't go right around. Oh, what's the story? Shit. Please. It just doesn't go around to the flange. Oh, fuck. That's got to mesh up to here. It's just not meshing up. It's a bit of a different view to what it was when she was in the Marper Inlet. And we're getting on top of the leaks this morning on fiberglassing. I think we've got most of them. Replace this. Ash is done around the outside. And we've also put a new cap on this too. And right now I'm just sanding it. You can see the delamination going on in the fiberglass here. And down in there. Giving that a sand. And we're using an epoxy. This stuff here is really good. Uh, it's a 4 to 1. It's one of those. And we've got, I hope we've got... The hardener, I ain't going to do much without a hut, there it goes. That's the, uh, the hardener, it's 4 to 1. So, getting on top of this is going to be uh, really good because it's been leaking slowly. And these two places here combined with these two, for some reason this area, and you can see the actual roof has created a dip in time. It would have been flush when my father first built it, but it's actually dropped a little bit and that's also holding the water. So this resin will waterproof that. So I'm on the hunt for a starter motor for this Nuffield 345. I've got my little flange pattern I've pressed against it. Been into this place in here, and uh, they said, oh, there's another guy looking for one too. He's down in Geraldine. I said, that's me mate, Robbie. 
goose shooter from Geraldine. He goes, yeah, yeah, that's who it is. And so he's looking and I'm looking and we're driving around and they've given me like a couple of names. A guy called Viv Barker and another guy, Rick, is, who's Rick one. So we're just driving around right now trying to find a bloody starter motor to get on this boat. It's been a funny morning just trying to find something. And all these little stories are coming out. I went in their smoker room about five or six of them all sitting around having their lunch and uh, all the stories come in about where you might find a 345 Nuffield engine. Anyway, we're going to carry on and uh, before this day is over, hopefully we can get a starter motor for it. Well, it's a wreck as it might have wake you and they've got one but they're keeping it for themselves because they're rare and he's probably got a Nuffield tractor or something. I've been in this place here and spoken to a couple of really helpful people. Uh, David was the guy I spoke to and um, he's given me a list of, well, all the specs of a particular starter motor they can get. It's got 10 teeth on it, but not 100% if it's the right one for me or not. So we are sort of chipping away. I'm going to do my uh, calculations and see if um, it's got the right, I need a pair of calipers really, see if it's got the right dimensions, because my piece of paper is not quite accurate. It would appear I'm a little bit out, but then I just stuck a piece of paper on and measured it. So he was really helpful in there. And I've got all the specs here. For, that's it there. You can see that. Oh, geez, I don't know. It looks like it would go on, but you just don't know until you get it there. Oh, got a lot of work to do to get a starter motor still, I think. So that's the bloke's got this mooring here, wants to buy it. Uh, first of all, we've got to get it started. So let's go down and have a look and see what's going on with the starter motor. As you can see on this one here, the, one, the new one I bought, I didn't have it meshed up right with this sitting in and this here got ground off by the ring gear which wasn't flash um, it's got 11 teeth on it and the trouble is that the nose cone stops it from fitting in so we want to take a section out of the nose cone let's have a look at that that's as far as she goes so it wants to line up to here but it doesn't go any further it stops and uh, we need to line that up so it's going to actually be the nose cone down the bottom here, you need to take a section out. Well, I'll mark it and we'll grind away. So here we go. I gave it a couple of turns in there and you can see where actually it's hitting. That's uh, that's the mark, so we want to cut, I reckon, I'm not an engineer, but I reckon we want to cut down there and cut that piece there out, because the nose cone holds this bit on. So we want to go down here and yeah, cut those bits out where it's rubbed against it and these holes may not match up because this is not a factory piece for it but to, of a Ford but we may better get it to work possibly Rightio, we've actually got it done up, and uh, I've got two bolts in, this one here's floating around so nothing, but uh, we actually need the one on the opposing side to go in, but it doesn't match up, so it looks pretty flush. I'm a little bit uh, sceptical about the nose cone and where it meets the ring gear inside, and if it's going to be alright, I'm a bit uh, anxious about turning her over, because I don't want to do any damage in there, but uh, well, I've got no choice really, so we'll see how that goes. Battery connected up, power on. Right, here's the moment of truth, boys. Is she gonna go? Nothing. Not even gonna turn it. Bugger. Right, um, now I know what most of you are probably thinking. You're probably thinking, oh, your battery's flat. It'd be a fair call, but uh, I know the battery's not flat. It's uh, 850 cranking hours, it's brand new battery and I've volt tested it and although it's not as good as it could be, it's on 12.4, should be around 13, that ain't the problem. So what I'm thinking is this, and try and follow me here, you've got your, your sprocket that comes out on the spring and it engages and I reckon the whole thing is too tight up and it's going too far and it's pushing so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some spaces in it and I'm also going to grind some more off on the nose cone. So we'll get back to you, that'll take me probably another half an hour and we'll get back and see how that goes. I 
I think I've actually exhausted all ideas now. I've certainly buggered the starter motor if it doesn't work because it's only good for one thing. Uh, I've put a spacer in there and one down here. That space is the same distance as what the mark was on the ring gear, which led me to believe that that uh, drive cog was actually touching the ring gear at the end. And that's why it wasn't turning over, so it's bought out that fail. That's a theory. Righto, we've uh, got battery connected back up. And we do need another bolt on the other side, but that's flush, so in theory, well, I just won't say anything. See so we go. Moment of truth. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh, yes. Beauty. That's, that's good. That's good. That's problem solved. Problem solved. Oh, man. Whew. Working on this boat has been an absolute bloody roller coaster of emotions. I want to say thank you to uh, big, big hearty thank you to Mad Kiwi and also big hearty thank you to to Robbie Goose Rooter down at Geraldine. Both you guys helped me so much with this, and um, we did it, boys. Between the three of us, we nutted it out. Uh, I was right; it was. It was just didn't come out that little distance. I possibly didn't need to grind so much off, but, oh no, I did, it was touching there too. But anyway, I've got Bill coming looking tomorrow, so uh, hopefully uh, he's going to buy it. No reason why he shouldn't. That's my video. Be good, can't be good, be careful. See you later. Bilge pump going at the same time. Well, that's such a such a relief. Happy days. Oh, I'm going to go fishing now. No, nah, maybe I might just go and have a uh, a shot. I haven't drunk a whiskey for a long time. I think it's time for a celebration. See ya.